إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ولا ينتظم في سلكها إلا سالك اللهم صلي وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين يقول عز من قائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين أوصي نفسي وإياكم بتقوى الله وبلزوم طاعته أناء الليل وأطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيه عنا In the name of Allah the gracious the merciful to him we belong and to him we shall return we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite grace and boundless mercy to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us on this blessed day of Jumu'ah, to grant us the light and the guidance and the healing and the upliftment and the beauty and the bounties of this blessed day of Jumu'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us, to forgive our sins and our shortcomings and our weaknesses. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and honor our brothers and sisters across the world who are facing difficulties and hardships that we cannot even imagine. May Allah protect them. And may Allah grant them relief from east to west, from Africa to Asia, to Europe and beyond. May Allah bring our brothers and sisters the tranquility and may He bring them warmth in their hearts and coolness in their eyes. Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. Brothers and sisters, one of the most painful moments in the seerah of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the battle of Uhud. The battle of Uhud was a moment when so many of the beloved companions and the core companions to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were brutally murdered and many were mutilated. And amongst them, was the beloved uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lion of Allah, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. And Hamza was someone who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved dearly. Their relationship, their bond was profound. Sayyiduna Hamza entered into Islam in a profound moment when he was returning from one of his hunting trips and someone came to him and told him that Abu Jahl was mocking, insulting, and belittling his nephew. And so when Hamza returned, he didn't skip a beat. He went with his arrow and he hit Abu Jahl upside the head, alongside the head. And when the people kind of gestured to get up, Abu Jahl said, don't, I did insult his nephew. Because when it came to Hamza, very few would be willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. The power, the presence, the honor, the dignity. And he says, he said to Abu Jahl, At-tashtumu, do you curse the one ana ala dinihi, the one that I am upon his way? And he announced his Islam in this profound assembly. And with the coming of Hamza into the fold of Islam, you saw an added dimension of power. For now, there was a type of confidence, especially with the Islam of Hamza and the Islam of Umar, to take Islam now into the public sphere in a very particular way down to Mecca, to chant the takbirat and the tahlilat, to say Allahu Akbar and La ilaha illallah. Hamza was special. Hamza was unique. And he was there in the hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina. 
He was there in the battle of Badr and his role in the battle of Badr was profound. And the victory of the believers was in large part because of the presence of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. But as many of us know, it was on that tragic day of Uhud when the believers lost and there was though there were those who were plotting in a very devious and deceiving manner to assassinate Hamza. It was by the order of Hind bin Utbah to order Al Habish Al Habishi who, who was this profound marksman with a spear and he killed him. He caught him and he killed him but see Hamza was not someone that if it was toe to toe could be beaten so it needed to be done in a way that was devious. Wahshi, his name was Wahshi. Nonetheless brothers and sisters it was not just that Hamza was killed but rather it was that Hamza his body was mutilated. They mutilated his body in the most egregious and vile fashions, cutting off all sorts of limbs and body parts, and then opening his belly, taking out his guts, taking out his liver. Hind trying to consume a part of the body of Hamza. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that when she tried to consume it, her body rejected it because Hamza's body was a body in Jannah. And there's no way that someone like Hind could consume a piece of Jannah. SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, when the Prophet ﷺ, when the battle was done and he himself was deeply injured and he was looking, يتفقد, looking and he found Hamza in that state and the companions were observing that state of so many companions being fallen and many of them being mutilated. You can imagine the emotional state. You can imagine the anger, the pain, the trauma. It was very real, very intense. And so, in that state, with that image and those sights, and that level of deep pain, you can imagine the utterances that started to come out from a people who were, who were now in a state of vengefulness. You look at what you have done to our people. And so it began to be uttered, you know, well, in the face of one of ours who were mutilated, it was said that we will, set, we will mutilate 70 of theirs. SubhanAllah. And we would hope that we could leave these bodies. But if it wasn't for the fact that the, the wives and the, and the women of, of these fallen would be in such pain, we would allow for the hyenas and allow for the birds of prey to consume and let them be resurrected from the, from the bodies of these animals. And that's a statement of power, if you will, a show of force. That's how high the emotions were amongst the companion and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in that state, very specific verses were revealed. And this is what I want us all to pause and reflect on what Allah chose in His divine wisdom to reveal in that moment, which was one of the most painful and low points of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the seat of our beloved. Allah revealed the last verses of Surah An-Nahl, the chapter of the bee, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين وإن عاقبتم فعاقبوا بمثل ما عوقبتم به ولئن صبرتم لهو خير للصابرين سبحان الله الله reveals these verses in this context call to the way of Allah with wisdom. What a shift. You know, imagine that. Imagine for a moment being in the state where you just saw your own, you, to, to see your uncle mutilated in that way, someone who is so beloved to your heart, to see the companions in that state. 
But the, the divine guidance, the wisdom in that moment is called to the way of Allah with wisdom. And called to the way of Allah with the best of words, بالموعظة hasana. And if you are in argumentation, then use that which is even better. Verily, Allah knows those who have veered off of His path. And Allah knows those who are on the path of guidance. And if you find yourself in the space of retribution, that you want to now take a course to address the pain and the trauma that you've experienced, then only do it in balance. Only do it in balance. However, if you are patient, then that is what is best for those who are patient. If you are patient, then that is what is best for those who are identified as being patient. And so in that moment, the Prophet says, بَلْ نَصْبِرُ يَا رَبْ بَلْ نَصْبِرُ Verily Allah, we will be patient. And I just, I want you to appreciate the emotional state that the Prophet was in and the companions were in to be at such a place of loss. But the wisdom is one that shifts the discourse and elevates it in a way to bring it to the highest of heights. It's no longer just what's happening here in the dunya. You know, the push and the pull and the struggle of, of someone who, who may have harmed you or a family member that you're struggling with or, or narratives that are paining you or what you're seeing on the news. It's not just about this. But Allah is saying, I want you to redirect your attention and elevate your soul, yourself because ultimately, ultimately it's about Allah. Ultimately it's about Allah. And that's why Allah continues to say, وَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ O Muhammad, be patient. And know that your patience is only ma'allah, is only with Allah. That's very important because you know, we may find perhaps in this realm that we live in time and space, we may find that a discourse of patience, it sounds weak. Especially you can imagine the Arabs of that time who were all about their thar, you know, to, to get back, to, to pay it back with, with excess. Because that's what was being said, you know, for one of our bodies that were being mutilated, we will mutilate 70. You know, that's, that's the, the Arab spirit, if you will, of that time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so as you can imagine, when people are in that mindset, the idea of patience is, is not really so recognizable. But Allah says, Wasbir, be patient. And know that your patience is with Allah. Your patience is with Allah. وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ And don't be sad about them. وَلَا تَكُوا فِي ضَيْقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ And don't be so bothered, tight-chested, angry, if you will, by that which they are conspiring. Because you can see, you see the discourse, why Allah is talking to the Prophet and by extension us in that language. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it, 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 it induces sadness. But don't be sad. And don't be so tight-chested by that reality. In Allah ma'al ladhina taqaw wal ladhina hum muhsinun. The, the chapter of this, the Quran, the chapter, the Surah Al-Nahl ends by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Verily, Allah is, the one is, is with the one who is most God conscious. And Allah is with those who are muhsinun, those who are excellent, beautiful, elevated in their states. Brothers and sisters, this is what Allah is calling us towards. He's calling us to elevate ourselves constantly in this dunya. It's very easy, very easy to get caught up in the weeds of this dunya, in the pains of this dunya, in the struggles of this dunya, in the challenges of this dunya. 
in the day to day realities of this dunya it's so easy to get caught up but Allah he chose a moment when the Prophet and his companions were if you will in the lowest of states to elevate them and to shift their direction to shift their vantage point to say if you're here for the sake of Allah then listen to me and that's why Allah begins by saying ud'u ila sabili rabbik call to the way of your Lord see even in the moments when it's so challenging and it's so painful beware of coming to get retribution for yourself you know don't don't push forward for yourself, for your, for your nafs, for your interests, for your family. You know, this very person, self-centered orientation. No, Allah is saying, listen, call to the way of Allah. Call to my way because that's the only way that we should be calling. Our essential responsibilities as believers, as people who surrender themselves to La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, is regardless of the circumstances we're looking at. Allah wants us always to elevate ourselves, regardless of what the moment is, to say to everyone, look at Allah, see Allah. I direct you towards Allah. That takes a lot, brothers and sisters. It takes patience. It takes wisdom. It takes foresight. It takes discipline. It takes controlling the self. We have, to, we have to empty out a lot of maybe the diseases in our hearts of anger and envy and, and the desire for vengefulness. To say that I need a heart that is malaiki, that is angelic, pure. So that when yes, something so painful or traumatic or I see something that really aggravates me or angers me, that I'm able to now dispose myself in a vertical orientation ma'allah. ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة. Be wise in the way you call to Allah. Always consider what is the moment that you are engaged in, and what does that moment require. Brothers and sisters, we may find it that we have a problem with one of our family members. We see that maybe my child, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, my aunt, my uncle, my father, my mother. They're acting in ways unbecoming, perhaps not obeying the ways of this religion, not obeying, not praying, maybe not fasting, maybe saying things inappropriately or doing acts that are wrong. Or maybe I see people in the public sphere who are Muslim, but they are perhaps acting in ways unbecoming. And they are advocating for things that I may may categorically disagree with, disagree with, or maybe even maybe blasphemous. But the order and the call of Allah in this moment is: you have to be very wise with how you deal with people. Don't be reactionary. Don't be aggressive. If I see my child in a state where maybe they are doubtful about matters of this religion and they're struggling with the deen. They're struggling with their hijab. They're struggling with what it means to, to love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perhaps. They're struggling. They're, they're going through a really difficult time because the pressures around them are so intense. And I may be in a state where I'm so fearful over my child that rather than being wise, I am very aggressive. And I hit them hard. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. So that's why you have to elevate yourself. If the Prophet was being told, when in the context of his own uncle being brutally murdered and mutilated, if he's being told, Ya Muhammad, elevate yourself in this moment, then certainly you and I, we can elevate ourselves in the moments when perhaps we see our brothers, our sisters, or our family members acting in ways unbecoming. That we have to employ wisdom. And not just that, Allah says. Don't just be wise, meaning that you choose the right words. You choose the right circumstances and the right context. Every moment has its saying. You know, you have to be wise about how you speak. 
Don't just say what's on your heart and mind aggressively, kind of unsolicited. Be thoughtful, be strategic. Because the end goal is Allah. And if we put that in our mindset, if we put in our mindset that the end goal is actually Allah, and not myself or my desire to say, then I may be serving my own shahwa and desire rather than actually serving Allah. And very often that's one of the diseases and the pitfalls of those who may think that they are on the path of righteousness. They may find themselves aggressive, prompt, direct, blunt, hurtful. And they say, well, I'm saying the haq, I'm saying the truth. I'm saying what, is needs, to, what needs to be said. Where is the hikmah? Where is the, the divine command to be wise? Spouses will do this to each other all the time. Very little wisdom, direct aggression, even humility, humiliation. I, I humiliate my spouse. I humiliate my child. I even humiliate my parents. Well, I'm saying the truth. I'm speaking the haqq. I'm saying the Quran. I'm using the sunnah. That's not the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's not the direction that Allah is giving us in the Quran. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. And when you're giving advice, use the most beautiful, eloquent, elegant, gentle of words. That's what Allah is telling us. As one of the poets or the Arabs have said, Advice is heavy. وَلَا تَجْعَلْهُ جَدَلًا أَنُّصْحُ ثَقِيلٌ فَلَا تُرْسِلْهُ كَالْجَبَلٌ You know, advice, it's heavy. For someone to hear or to take advice from you, that's heavy stuff. So don't send it out like a mountain, you know. I want to give you advice, so I just <laughs> throw a big heavy weight at you. أَنُّصْحُ ثَقِيلٌ Be gentle. I have to think about the heart and the mind of the person that's in front of me. I want him, I want him to be awakened. I want him to be towards Allah. So I have to think about how I, I, I send out my risala. And don't allow that your nasiha becomes a point of contention and argumentation. And that's why we have to then choose. وَاخْتَرْ وَاخْتَرْ لِنُصْحِكَ الدُّرُرَ Choose for your nasiha pearls. That when the words that you're going to utter, the way you're going to speak, maybe even your body language, your, your face, your expression, how you sit down, the, maybe the space that you choose. What is the condition of my heart? Is it sincere? All of this is what must preoccupy me before I go to utter. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal maw'idha al hasana. And even when you're coming into a moment of argumentation and debate, and it may be very intense with, with someone who is a mu'anid, someone who's rejecting, someone who's aggressive, someone who may even be an enemy, choose the best of words. Go into that which is ahsan, Allah is saying. So not just use the status quo, but you need to dig deeper, be smarter. Ask more. Contemplate further. Take a day or two or three or ten to actually think about what I'm doing. What am I calling towards? What am I trying to advocate for? Because there's a moment when all of us will stand in front of Allah and it will be said, why did you do what you do? What motivated you? Yes, you prayed and you fasted and you read Quran and you made hajj and you, and you, and you fulfilled these realities but so much of what you were doing on a day-to-day -day basis was harming you. And so be wise to that. Be wise. And so yes, brothers and sisters, this is what Allah expects from us. And I want us to challenge ourselves this Jum'ah khutbah to figure out how we are going to make that pivot. And no longer am I going to be reactionary, abrupt, aggressive, Allah told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ And it was by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you were, you were 
kind and gentle with them. And if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have fled from you. We have to, brothers and sisters, work tirelessly every day to soften our hearts. To make sure that our hearts are pure. So that when we speak and when we engage, it is coming from the heart to the heart. It's not coming from the nafs to the ear. And so people will either reject it wholesale. Because if you come to me with a nasiha and I'm doing something very wrong, it's heavy. It's heavy for me to hear nasiha sometimes. And so I don't want to throw nasiha in a way that will make me reject it categorically because, well, you're, you're trying to tell me I'm wrong and then you're hitting me with a hard nasiha that I'm just going to reject it. No, I, the, the goal is that change happens. Hearts are altered. And that was the spirit of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day in and day out. His ability to touch people's hearts because his heart was in the right place. Because his heart was towards Allah. His heart was ma'allah. It was patient ma'allah. Wasbur, wasbir wa ma sabruka illa billah. That's where his heart was. And so one day, they're praying. And Muawiyah as sulami is narrating the story. He says, we are praying with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And someone sneezed. And so in salah, I said, yarhamuk Allah. And so the people started to indicate to me, you know, you know, what are you doing? People in salah start to look at him like, so he said to them loudly, he said, <laughs> you know, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking at me? He started to speak this out loud. So the companions started to smack on their thighs with their hands and smack on their thighs until the salah was done. And so Muawiyah says, he says, I have not seen a mu'allim who was so beautiful and so wise more than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma kaharani. He didn't aggress against me or yell at me or hit me or curse at me. All he said to me was, Barakallahu feek. But this salah, this salah, laysat li kalam in nas, wala li kalam al bashar. This salah is not for the, the words that we say as human beings. Wala kin ju'ilat as salah. As salah was made for a tasbih. However, this salah was made for saying subhanallah and saying Allahu Akbar and reciting the book of Allah. It was gentle, it was calm, it was kind, it was subtle, it was beautiful, it was latif. It was coming from a warm heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did this countless times. I've mentioned multiple times the man who urinated in the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how all the companions wanted to jump on him but it was the Prophet who stopped them and he, he shifted all of them into a very different direction to let them experience a different way of being and he held the man gently and he protected him and he said not here in the house of Allah this is to be done outside. And so from his love, the man's love for the Prophet Muhammad in that moment because how this leader dealt with him, he found his heart softened and he made dua only for him and the Prophet and he excluded the companions who were there. But this was because of the softness, the hikmah, the wisdom, the approach. The same thing when the man who came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saying, Ya Rasulullah, I want to commit zina. The Prophet didn't yell at him or smack him or get nervous or frustrated or angry. As perhaps maybe sometimes when one of our own children come to us with something that is so painful to hear. But maybe that they, they, they fall in love with someone or they have a, a bad relationship. Or they're doing something that's wrong or haram. That they didn't, the Prophet didn't get unnerved. But he reasoned with a, with a humble heart. And he said, is this something you would be okay with for your mother or your sister or your daughter? And the man said, no. He said, then so too we should not accept that for ourselves. And the man said, from that moment on, anytime the idea 
of committing zina came into my heart, I would remember that moment, with that beautiful moment with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Brothers and sisters, allow your children to have those moments with you, that they really experience from your heart genuine love and patience and care. <coughs> this is not to say that we are acquiescing or allowing for haram behaviors or wrong behaviors. Yes, it's painful. Evil is, is painful. Haram is painful. And it's very painful when it's coming from our own family members or from, from ourselves or, or we see it. And we even maybe see people advocating it pub, for, for it publicly. But we have to be thoughtful and wise. Yes, we have to call to the way of Allah. Certainly, we have to be able to say, listen, the way of Allah is in this direction. But I want to I wanna package it in such a beautiful way to ensure that it is going as intended to the receiving heart. Not as my emotional state is crying out. Because so often, brothers and sisters, in those reactionary states, in those aggressive states, what we end up doing, unfortunately, is we, we force people into even a further path of misguidance. Today, I, I see so much of that discourse online. People who, who are trying to call to a, a certain type of righteousness and goodness are going so aggressive and blunt and direct and even condescending and insulting in a way that is leading people into further misguidance. We need to reconsider the states of our hearts. You know, you see Al-Hassan and Hussein one day walking into a place where the wudu is being made and they see an elderly man making wudu the wrong way. And so they sat there considering, well, how can we show him that maybe his wudu is being done the wrong way? And they, said, they considered it for a moment and they, they actually consulted one another. And they said, you know what? Maybe we should go. You make wudu, I make wudu in front of the man and then we ask him to judge between us. And both of them did wudu the right way. So they went to the man. They said, can you judge between us which one of our wudu is being done the right way? So Al-Hassan did, al Hussein did, and the man got it. He said, both of you are doing your wudu the right way. I need to fix my wudu. But see, it was a relationship between what? People who really cared about conveying a message meaningfully and hearts that are receptive to messages. And that's the equation here, brothers and sisters. It's about we, you and I, every day, we have to try to have two dispositions, two ahwal. One hal is how am I conveying? And the second hal is how am I receiving? Because each and every single one of us we want to convey, but each and every single one of us, far more than needing to convey, need to hear. All of us need nasiha. All of us may be doing something that's wrong. All of us may need a brother or a sister that is coming with a sincere heart to tell us, brother or sister, what you're doing is wrong. And we have to be open to that. A very big example in this regard was during the time of Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, who was the second Abbasid Khalifa. And there was a Majusi, a Zoroastrian, who had claimed to enter into Islam. And I'll close the khutbah with this. And so he went to Abu Ja'far al-Mansur. He said, you know, I, I was doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And really the smell around the Kaaba from the sweat was very bad. Okay, <laughs> listen to the, the makr of, of this man. So he is a Zoroastrian. What do Zoroastrians do? They have a particular worship, they worship fire. So he goes to the Khalifa and he says, I was making tawaf and the smell around the Kaaba was really bad. I have an idea. How about we burn incense on top of the Kaaba? Bukhur. So that when the winds come, it will create a very beautiful scent for the people making tawaf. Abu Ja'far said, that's a very nice idea. What's more beautiful than having Bukhur on top of the Kaaba, which is already so beautiful? And what was the plan? to burn fire on top of the Kaaba so the people are making tawaf around the fire. One of the great scholars of that time, Abu Yazid, who was in the Levant, in, in Asham, he receives word of this happening. And so he said, let's go to make Hajj. Abu Ja'far Mansur knew of this scholar Abu Yazid. 
And when he heard that Abu Yazid, this scholar, is going to make Hajj, he said, I want to go as well. It is blessed company to be in Hajj with that individual. And so they reach. So Abu Yazid reaches at Tan'im, which is right outside of the, 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 the Haram al Makki, where a Masjid Aisha is, the closest place for Ihram. He reaches at Tan'im, he settles his belonging, he begins to teach. Abu Ja'far Mansur had sent his people, said, Preserve for me a seat in the front row. I want to come and listen to Abu Yazid. So Abu Yazid had told some of his students, Listen, before Abu Ja'far came, he said, I want you, when Abu Ja'far comes, to bring up the issue of this burning of the incense over the Kaaba. And tell me, you know, we have heard that there are those who have said to burn the incense over the Kaaba. So, the students did it, and then Abu Yazid, in the presence of Abu Ja'far Mansur, he says, don't say that. I could never fathom or imagine that Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, and he has, a, he has a, a certain type of hurma over the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would never agree to such a thing. No, no, don't say that. Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, hearing this, he starts to indicate to his helpers, go turn out the incense. Go put it out quickly before Abu Yazid gets to the haram. Abu Yazid employed what, brothers and sisters? A lot of wisdom. Yes, in this context, Abu Ja'far was someone who had a heart open to listen. And it's not always the case. There are those who don't want to listen. There are those who are, who are, who are tyrants or evil or painful or, or harmful. And yes, maybe some form of retribution may need to be had or iqamatul adl, or some form of justice, but we have to be thoughtful, always, in our states, always, when we're dealing with one another, in the home, in the community, in society, we have to be careful about the steps that we take, and why we choose to take them, because ultimately what we want is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I've said many times, certainly, certainly brothers and sisters, justice must be upheld, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was very strident at times when things needed to be so. When someone would commit a particular evil and they needed to be punished, he would punish them. That's one reality. So what, let's not conflate the two. But that is to also indicate that the standard spirit of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as guided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was called to the way of Allah with wisdom, with the most beautiful of words, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst the muhsineen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be beautiful and wise in our dispositions. May Allah help us to be sincere in our calling to His way. May Allah make it that our hearts are always oriented in the direction of calling to the way of Allah. And may our hearts always be open and receptive to receiving the guidance and the hidayah and the advice from our brothers and sisters. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك اللهم يا واصل المنقطعين أوصلنا إليك اللهم هب لنا عملا صالحا متقبلا يقربنا إليك اللهم استرنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا أعنا ولا تعن علينا اللهم اغفر لنا خطايانا اللهم ارحمنا برحمتك الواسعة اللهم ارحمنا برحمتك الواسعة اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم ارحم موتانا واستجب دعاءنا يا الله يا الله يا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة